So let's start <clears throat> with probably the most basic and hopefully all of you sitting before me and all of you listening understand the basic agency concepts. But just to make sure we're all on a level playing field, because I do see some people here that have been in the business probably longer than I have of 21 years and way shorter. Maybe it's your first continuing education course. And I know what you're thinking. You're now looking over at the guy beside you and going, what the hell did I get into? Yes, this is me. All right. So what is agency? Agency can actually be thought of as, as three different ways. When you say agency to a person, there's usually one of these three thoughts that come to a person's mind. And I mean an agent, a, a, a real course mind. Probably generic too. It's the office that you work for. I work for an agency. Or it's the functional relationship of that agent. I create agency with my clients. So number two, that's what most people think. It's the relationship that gets created between the principal and the person or the agent rather. So it's between the principal and the agent. For example, Peyton Manning had a sports agent. Britney Spears has a talent agent which may be questionable. <laughs> a seller has a real estate agent. So that relationship is very common throughout every agency there is. What differs is their fiduciary responsibilities, which we're going to get to. All right. And the third thing is an establishment engaged in doing the business for another. Those are typically what most people think of. So today we are going to spend the time on dealing with number two, the relationship that gets created between the principal of the deal and the agent themselves. So let's distinguish two more words and talk a little bit about what the difference is between a client and a customer. And it's very imperative for you new people that you understand that there is definitely a legal difference in those two words for us. So let's start with a customer. A customer is someone with whom an agent can give customer level service. They have a customer relationship. You can provide that person some basic services. You have to be uh, reasonable skill and care. You have to be honest. You have to be forthright. You have to be disclosed defects to the property, but you are not acting as their agent. You are not obligated to give them insight, advice, help, things of that nature. That is not, would not be construed as customer level service. All right. So I want to pay homage to a, my mentor who is Mr. Dan Miller. Dan is no longer with us. Dan Miller's my board number for anybody out there listening was 46. Yeah, two digits, four, six. Um, if you're out of state, Dan was in one of the early institutions in uh, our board here. Dan's the one that took me under his wing, taught me how to teach, and did all that. Dan had six words that he used to use for customer level, and it's very simple. It's this, do no harm, do no help. That's it. All right. Do no harm. You can't lie to them. You can't mislead them. You can't give them false truths, but do no help. Don't give them advice. Don't give them insight. Don't give them any advantage. That would be construed as customer level service. Now, the other person 
that we will distinguish that from is a client. And in a client relationship, we actually do legally represent the client. So in other words, I represent my principal in all of the negotiations with other third party people regarding whatever issue I was hired to be his agent for. Like I said, sports agency, talent agency, model agency, real estate agency. And we must represent that person very loyally to their interest, not ours. We have to put their interest in front of us during all of the negotiations and during the entire time frame of the transaction with whomever we are engaged with. So the easy answer is a customer is someone with whom we have no agency and a client is someone with whom we do have agency. And this job is very simple. Simply find a customer, someone you have no agency, and turn them into a client. The relationship that we create is a fiduciary relationship that is either expressly, or listen to me, or implied authorities to act on that person's behalf. What am I saying here? We have express agency and we have this thing called implied agency. Both of these are agencies. They are both valid. You owe all your duties and obligations, which we're going to discuss. Even though implied agency is really a shitty agency. Yes, it is. All right. Express agency, good. Implied agency, bad. It still is agency. You still owe all your duties and obligations to the client. <clears throat> we have to act and represent the principal based upon the authority given to us to be their agent. And when we are crowned or conferred agency by our principal, there are actually three levels of agency that can be conferred to a agent. The first level or the highest level is what they call universal agent. A universal agent is someone who represents their principal in virtually all aspects of that principal's life. The most common one that you guys would understand or the easiest to understand is what we call a power of attorney, a POA. I have POA for my mother. I can do banking for her. I can enter into contracts. I can pay bills for her. I can do all kinds of things because I have universal agency for my principal, who is my mother. Right below that, we have what's called general agency. And general agency represents the principal in a range of activities typically very narrow business activity like a property manager if you manage property and you have a management agreement with your principal you have been conferred general agency meaning you may enter into contracts like lawn care or painting or handyman you could collect rent you might go to court for that landlord. You might pay their bills, but you're only doing it for a limited activity, i.e. that property that you were given power on. If he has another property, say down in Florida or Texas, and you are not managing it, then obviously you do not have the power for that area. So that's general agency. The lowest level or the third level and I don't really mean lowest as in degree, I guess. The lowest as in the most restrictive would be special agency. A special agency is when a agent is conferred the power to literally represent their client in one activity 
usually in one area. Ta-da! That is a realtor. All right. When you are hired to list the property for sale, you are given or conferred special agency. You are to market the property for sale. That's it. You don't do lawn care. You don't screen the tenant that's in it. All you do is one item, market it for sale. And I know somebody in the back row is raising their hand going, but what about when I bring a buyer? Yeah, that's true. If you bring a buyer, now you are doing the selling side and that is literally one activity as well. So you can actually be doing several agencies concurrently. Let me give you an example. I just told you, I am a universal agent for my mother, but I'm also a general agent for my investor friend because I manage his properties and I have two listings and working with three buyers. So I have universal agency with one principal. I have special agency with two or three different principals. And then over here with my investor friend, I've got general agency all going on at the same time. So I can have multiple agencies with multiple different principals. Okay. So that is basically what we're talking about. And that's kind of the groundwork that we are going to be discussing today is that relationship known as agency. And we're going to talk about what defines that agency. And that's how we get separated from the sports agent, the talent agent, you know, all of those is in the fiduciary responsibilities that actually define that agency.